This is part three in our series of lectures on section 4.5. In this lecture we'll do an example involving an inverse image of a set. This is the same function from r to r that we considered in the previous lecture, f of x equals x squared plus 1. But this time we're going to find the inverse image of this set, this set, and this set. So recall, first of all, the working definition that if you give yourself a subset of the codomain, then the inverse image of that subset is equal to the set of x in the domain such that f of x is an element of that subset y. So with that definition, see if you can calculate what is this set f inverse of the closed interval from minus 1 to 1. And the way we'll do it is we'll, we'll write down this working definition but we'll make it very specific to this particular function and this particular set y. So begin by just simply writing this down and uh, make a sequence of equalities in which you get more and more specific about um, what that set is and then see if you can't nail down exactly what set it really is. Put your video on pause and see if you can do it. Okay, so here's my solution. So I begin by just writing down the working definition of this. It's the set of x in R, the set of x in the, in the domain, such that f of x maps into this set. So now we just keep rewriting this, but replace f of x by x squared plus 1. And now we use the working definition of what it means to say that something is in this interval. It means this number here, x squared plus 1, is bigger than or equal to minus 1 and less than or equal to 1. Um, if you subtract off 1 from the inequality, you get minus 2 is less than or equal to x squared, less than or equal to 0. But x squared can never be strictly negative, so to say that it's less than or equal to 0 is no different from saying that it's equal to 0. And the set of x in R such that x equals 0 is just this set, singleton 0. So that's the inverse image of this set. So now give this one a try. It's a similar kind of calculation. We'll do it in a similar way. Here I'm reminding you the working definition of f inverse of something. Put your video on uh, pause and see if you can do this one. Okay, so here it is, and I put in all of the details. f inverse of this set is by definition the set of all x such that f of x is an element of that set. There it is, that set. Now I specify my f to be x squared plus 1, and now I use the working definition of what it means to say that something is in this interval. It means it's between 0 and 10. Now I subtract off a 1, and I get this. It's the set of real numbers x such that x squared is between minus 1 and 9. But of course x squared can never be negative, so that's the same as the set of x in R such that x squared is bigger than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 9. Now that everything is non-negative, I can take square root. The square root of x squared is just absolute value of x, not just x. So it says that the absolute value of x lies between 0 and 3, and that means that x either lies between 0 and 3 or between minus 3 and 0. To say that absolute x is between 0 and 3 is to say that the distance of x to the number 0 on a number line is at most 3, and that means either it's here or it's here, um, but that can be rewritten as the set of real numbers between minus 3 and 3. Finally, give this one a try. Find the inverse image of the open interval from 2 to 5. Do it the same way. Put your video on pause and give it a try. Okay, so we start with the working definition of f inverse of the interval from 2 to 5. It's the set of all real numbers x such that f of x is an element of that interval. Now I just fill in what f of x is. And here I put what is the working definition of what it means to say that in a number x squared plus 1 is in this interval. It says that that number is bigger than 2 and less than 5. Now I just subtract 1 from the inequality to get this. 
Um, and to say that x squared is between 1 and 4, if we just take um, square root, that says that absolute x is between 1 and 2, and that's because both of these are positive. So we can just simply take square root. To say that absolute x is between 1 and 2 is to say that either x is between 1 and 2 or x is between minus 2 and minus 1. Now the first one of these sets in the union, well that's the open interval from 1 to 2, and the second is the open interval from minus 2 to minus 1, and that's the inverse image. One final note is that I want you to be careful when you're doing problems of this sort that you're using correct set notation. So here you see I've used set builder notation. So don't be sloppy in your use of a set notation, set builder notation. Make sure that you use it in a precise way.